All right, well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is the session on quickly and what we want to do for 12.04. Um, last cycle, we didn't do too much. I think we fixed some bugs um, that prevented it from working, but no new templates or really new fancy features. Um, this cycle, for me, so we've got a backlog from past cycles. But looking at just the blueprint alone, uh, there's a bunch of work around Launchpad that we're blocked on uh, new Launchpad features, which didn't get done. So we're going to continue blocking on those. I think we've been blocking those for at least two or three cycles now. Even so <laughs> let's not anticipate that changing. There's a bunch of uh, G-Edit work that could be done, uh, which uh, is also blocked on G-Edit, allowing us to activate plugins on the fly, which none of us signed up for or work for. Yeah. Did you look at the code? Or? No, I didn't get that far. I think that's something that we can upstream for the piece. So. Oh, upstream would definitely accept it if we yeah. did it. Yeah. The question is how bad do we want to do that? The question is how many plugins are ported to the new G-Edit, which will interest us? Well, all the ones we care about, like uh, G-Edit developer plugins. Yeah, it's ported, right? Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, that's just a question of, uh, you know, how badly do we want to activate that feature? Mm -hmm. Are you guys talking about porting the projects to Python 3? No, not I yet. Mean, it's to, it's um, to GDK 3. GDK. I'm, I'm going to get to that, but not yet. Okay. What we're talking about right now is uh, so the work required to make gedit uh, uh. accept plugins on the fly. And we're just talking about Upstream wants it done, and we want it done, but none of us, nobody seems to want it done badly enough to do it. I see. And whether we want to change that. I, I'm, I'm, I don't want it badly enough to change it. But considering, I think it's nice to have, but I think it's less important than, for example, port. Yeah, especially because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's other editors. Yeah. So, like, I know it's a, a lot of people seem like they're using, um, what is it, Genie or something? There's some Genie. other editor Genie. that a lot of quickly users seem to be using lately. That's got a lot of the features in it. Maybe that would be easier just to switch to a different editor. Like you said. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. I, I also don't want to, I'm not upset with the status quo. If people are using Genie, that, that's good, and we could maybe make it easier to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could add a quickly command to switch your editor. Oh, so this one. I thought quickly there was like an environment variable that you have to set. You can use quickly configure editor and it sets what is needed. Oh, okay. isn't that fancy? Okay, all right. So we did for, you know, three cycles. So uh, just for anybody else in the room that's excited about making G-Edit activate plugins on the fly, we'd love to have that done if somebody else wants to do it. Um, this would allow us to pass command line arguments when you do quickly edit, right? So that certain plugins get loaded. Like all the developer settings, you know, you, you could basically load G-Edit as a developer environment versus just a text editor. It would be nice. Um, okay, and the other bit of backlogging is um, some work around slash opt. Uh, did that all get, I haven't heard complaints about slash opt support. I don't know how many people are using it. Do you know, let me see what, like Rick Spencer, you've got an item here. Status that quickly should always install on slash opt, and if so, what should the submit be? <laughs> and did rocks, you've got something about work with DH Python 2 to support slash opt installs. I thought you did that. Not in DH Python 2, because we are not using DH Python. Ah. I thought Stefan fixed it so we don't have to do this anymore. I thought he made some weird way of installing ap applications so that they are in slash opt, but they think that they're in bin, so like you can ah. just write the application normally. Yeah. But did it, because Quickly is already enabled to install stuff on slash opt. Yes. Uh, it's not using DH Python, but that's just an implementation detail. <coughs> the thing is that, you know, there is still this issue with desktop file, yeah. which are not, you know, recognized but by the system. I thought Stefan fixed all that. Okay. I thought Stefan 
I thought it's like packaging magic that he does on the ARB side. Like all right, well, I'll take it to do to talk about it. Okay, so I think we could maybe get rid of all the code that installs the opt and everything. Like okay. I think Stefan fixed it. Because I didn't see any patch for Gmenu or you know all the stuff that detects application. I don't think he file. fixed it. In, he didn't fix it in quickly. No, it's not a fixing quickly. He fixed like the way that they install from the ARB or something. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still a need for, for instance, so that. You saw it on your dash. So there is a need so that you know the desktop files which are not in user share applications are recognized by the system. And I didn't see anything on Okay. But it's more it's a wider issue. Yeah. It's an Step issue. Step on fixed it. So okay. I think we should follow up with him and find out if there's more work to do. Okay, I've got that action item. Uh, let me just fill in some quick notes here. So the other thing is um, Python 3, PyGI, and GTK3. Those are the big yeah. uh, new platform stuff that we want to enable. Um, all of the there were blockers last cycle for them. I actually have a branch already written last cycle to change <coughs> the project code to PyGI and GTK3. But um, until like right around the release of the Neric. Uh, there were still problems with uh, the magic that the text um, automatically detects your Python dependencies using PyGI. So I never committed it last is cycle. That fixed, yeah. It is fixed. Some oh. community person fixed that, which, okay, which I'm very thankful for. <coughs> um, actually, they said, uh, oh, they can't get the stream working. Is there a button? Oh, you can't hear us, Joe? Oh, no. Is there a button press? <sighs> I don't know. Can anyone else hear us? Um. Yes, yeah, I means you can hear us, or? Oh, sorry, Joe, it's just you. <laughs> right, he says it's glitchy. It's glitchy. All right, I'll try to talk louder. Maybe that would help. Okay, so, right, so I've got a bit of code that does this for the Python, I mean, sorry, for the, uh, the project roots. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just continue testing that, and I'd like to land that as soon as possible for more testing. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. There is, that does not handle Python 3, because I, I also thought last cycle that Python 3 didn't have PyGI bindings, but I just look now and it does. Yeah. So that's good. So make it Python 3 also? I, I, think, I think so. I think because that's, well then it, this is yeah. an LTS, so this yeah. stuff's going to be used for five years. So. Yeah, I think it makes sense. <clears throat> um, and I'd also like to do those three things for quickly itself. I mean, I think that's strictly less mm -hmm. priority than the projects themselves and their separate work, but you know, why not just make it easier? For well, you should write a porting guide for people who have old projects. That's another thing. Yeah, okay, so we, last cycle we talked about, well, okay, do, can, we, can we do that upgrade automatically for the user? And I think we decided that that was too fraught. And so we wanted to add some capability to like, Mark a project as you know. This is I don't know epoch one of quickly, and then you know some way to upgrade to like the next yeah. version of uh, you would you would you would say okay I've manually changed my project. Yeah. Um, some way to well, tell quickly that we don't really need to add anything. We can, we can just, just tell it. that you know quickly version. From 12. Dot blah 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 is epoch 2 of quickly, and we don't upgrade from something which is before that date to a new one. <coughs> yeah. And we cool. could uh, we'd print some some small warning somehow. <coughs> yeah. And we point can. you at or some information. Point you maybe at like a wiki page. Mm -hmm. So we're has. talking about upgrading the GD to GDK3 using G object introspection instead of Pi GDK. And how to upgrade projects. Try that to three them. Three them so. Okay, so the, the, the plan of record then would be based on the version. Yeah. If it's an older version, pre pre P, then we print out a one line or point to wiki page with a tutorial on how to do it. Right. Or point just to tutorials. Which Pity already wrote. Okay, great. So well not it's not quickly specific, but the information is question, have you tried 
using, for example, two to three to convert Python three, but then adding some fixers to do some of the IGI, the GTK IGI conversions. Mm -hmm. That might be an approach to it. So maybe just, but instead of trying to do it automatically, just document that for users, point into that. Yeah, but you might you might be able to get a lot of mileage out of some automatic conversions. Mm -hmm. It may not be the default, but you could have it as a. I'm skeptical. I've just been through these upgrades before. I'm just throwing it out. <laughs> Do it to if, it, huh? if it's not automatic, though, uh, and we tell the user to run two to three, I think that would best. That might be the best. most of the way, right? right? The other, the other idea is to actually add some fixers because two to three is extensible, so you can add some fixers to. Oh, to do the PyGDK to GDK. We could write a command like quickly try upgrade or something. <coughs> Wrap to the and the first thing we do is take a branch and run it on the branch. And see what that does. If you have some you know small example applications, can you get when, a, when you get to this point, I'm I'd be willing to help out. Get a work item for Barry to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, Python three conversion is, is a big thing on my list. Okay. So. Well, there'll be a ton of Python applications that you can try on. Um, um, so, what's the work item now? Review. No. Right. Oh, right. The 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 two to three. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Is, is that the work item? Uh, I would say investigate the feasibility <laughs> of <laughs> So there's one. Um, so if these are all um, all. Uh, if the projects are upgraded, that means that we need to upgrade quickly widgets too, oh, which yeah. somebody's already started. But there's one problem that right now in the G object introspection, you can't get the window ID of a widget, which means you can't do G streamer. Like the way most G streamer things work is like you say, hey G streamer pipeline, here's a window ID. But that's like for some reason not open to introspection. Someone get a how, be How confident are you? I mean, that just sounds the same to me. Because my understanding is that it maps I'm not, I'm not C API. But I, I'm not 100% confident, but I've been told by multiple okay. people that, like, uh, in a couple of places. The other thing that doesn't work is from that is that you can't make a GDK window have a Pygame service on the inside. Because Pygame works the same way. Um, if you map it inside GDK. So could someone investigate that and try to fix it if possible? I assume that there was some crash or from it or something, so they just hit the functionality. Um, okay, well, I mean, I guess I guess that will be a sub. If, I, if it's gonna be a problem for Pygame, then I'm gonna have to do it when I port projects. No, because Pygame right now, the Pygame template doesn't use GDK, so we just ah. won't do it, so that's fine. I would like to change the Pygame template to like put it inside the GDK window, because then you get menus and everything, but mm -hmm. apparently I can't do it right now. So if someone could investigate that, and then tell me what to do. We may just have to delete the widgets for, like, so we'd have no webcam widget, we'd have no media player box. Okay, uh, I, I can take that. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, and just let, and then there's a new maintainer on quickly widgets. Just let him know the. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I remember that. He was like. I'd be willing to help out on cookie <laughs> widgets and IRC, and we're like, okay, you're the new maintainer. <laughs> well, in, in my defense, he'd been writing a lot of code, and I was just like never getting around. I just that our time reviewing the forum, so. And we need we need the two version. Hmm? We need the two version in the LTS. So just get two version for people not upgrading, and yeah. just GTK oh. three version. Yeah, Joe. Joe, you got the. Joe, Joe, did you get? I saw that you got the grid working, but did you get the media player box working? While we wait. Um. Oh. Nice. Yeah, and also there's no test for it. <laughs> I'll add that. Test huh? Test room. We have a lot of tests, but I never test I never run test room. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so, so mm -hmm. just on the GNOME screencast, there have been an example of how to write with PR, PYGY a G streamer application. So it's definitely really possible. Okay. 
All right, good. So <coughs> then I don't believe there are any blockers anymore for that migration. I think we understand how that's going to happen. So we just need to get the work done. Nice. And I have the, the action items for that. The other bits of blockers, so I, just FYI, I think that's the most important thing for quickly this cycle. And if we only do that, I would be happy. Can we do it before alpha one? Like do all the major um, repairs for that? I, since I have a branch, I think we can get most of the way there before alpha one. So maybe Joe, maybe. Uh, okay, for, for uh, uh, <clears throat> quickly. Well, I mean, So Joe asks, can we keep PyGTK and GTK2 support? Yes, that was what I was telling you. We, we have need to, to, don't we? We have to, because we will still have application with PY, PYGTK and GTK2. So. Yeah, we can't make people port their applications. So, so it needs to be two packages? Right. Well, right. I think we would have to, yeah, agreed that we have to keep support for the people that choose not to upgrade their, their packages. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how difficult that would be. I, I, don't, I don't think it would be too terribly difficult. Why would there be a problem? I, just some code that like, you know, searches and replaces might need to handle both, but. Oh, no, I don't think we should make, I think we should make, make the projects, the applications still run, but I don't think that we should support, should support users working on the old mm -hmm. stuff. Like I don't think, I think if you're programming quickly on 12.04, you're programming Oh, but if you haven't upgraded your, I see. Yeah, you haven't you upgraded your there. application, you just want yeah. to fix a bug, you can't unless you... We, we could support it for like at least a couple of releases. I mean, yeah, we I should, we should, we should. Um, we can't make you upgrade just to fix a bug. Like upgrade your project. Yeah, yeah so, so, I, so we need I, to add namespace, GTK2 or G, GTK3. So I think, so, yeah, support it, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be first class support. We just have to keep it. Keep well, it don't going. add features or anything. Yeah, don't add features for it. Make it in co installable. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's co installable. Um, okay. <coughs> so I'm going to move on to the other stuff, uh, which is kind of wish list items. Um, this is still a backlog. Uh, like a cute, quick <coughs> template, um, a Vala template, a, a Unity Lens template, all sorts of new templates that we'd love to have written. But we've never gotten around to. The cute quick template has been done. Oh, yeah, was that one? Yeah, he posted a message on the mailing list so that we can try it. And oh, yeah, you're right. Did we ever try it? Did anybody try it? I, I, I tried that happened. in August in five minutes, but I didn't get the time to do proper review or whatever. That so. would be nice to land. Okay, get an act and then work out of the way. Does somebody want to review that? I can review it. Well, we also need someone who knows Qt and QML. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Uh, what's your, I'm sorry, I don't know you. Yeah, so Johannes Chazer. Johannes? Okay. What, what's your like IRC? Oh, it's your launchpad Nick. So I can... Chazer. It's the same name. Chazer. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. With an E in the end. Oh, yeah, yes. Wow. Well, yeah. Sorry. I, 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 hello. <laughs> uh, okay, so review um, cute quick template. Just Is it a cute or a cute quick? I, mean, I, can move on. I believe it's cute quick. Um, and did rocks. Uh, so <coughs> I can review it for uh, sensibleness, if that's a word. And, and did rocks, can you review it for. Uh, Code acceptance. Yeah. And I would say review it for completeness too. Make sure it does all the major, like it, <coughs> make sure quickly package works. Basically. The thing is that I, from what I saw, it doesn't have any kind of <coughs> uh, components, as we don't have the code quit components for the desktop, so I'm not sure that. I don't know what that means. You know, the. Like, by default in Qt Quick, you can just draw rectangles. So you don't have like, I want a tree view or I want a combo box. So you don't have any widgets. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a simple items. So not yet any like buttons. So if you want to make a button, you put a mouse box down, yeah. respond to the mouse down event, change the picture. Yeah. Then we we'll come in like half a year. So it's how some so every developer will have their own. But what, what's the consequence of not having this? Is it same for us to say, oh, that's a cute quick application? And it's the way it's done. Yeah. That's what it is. So. <clears throat> People can bring in their own um, toolbox. toolbox. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the only thing is that they do, it still needs to make a package. So I think like we should really look at the packaging. Like, that's the hardest. That's the biggest hurdle, right? Like, so we don't want people deciding to write a cute quick app instead of a GDK app, only to find that they can't package it and release it after that. So, okay. Um, another thing. I know there's a session later today about like a hundred Unity lenses for for P. Um, I don't think we're positioned to help that effort because. We should have done that last cycle if we wanted to help that effort, but um, <coughs> at least in the future it would be nice. I think I think George has asked a couple times. It would be nice if we had a, like a lens. How hard is it to write a mm. lens? Do not know. I know he done that like a year ago, but then they broke the API and they right. So it just need to be refreshed, but all the mechanics was there last year. Let um, me ask you a loaded question, DJ. How is the how to write a template documentation? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe that would be a good unblocker to like get. You have quickly, 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 yeah. or to get it started, right? Well, basically, I should just take what was on my blog. Remember, I made the nine mm -hmm. part of quickly, and there's <coughs> five posts on how to build a template itself. So I can. Most of them are still relevant today, so I can just. Turn that and turn that into a proper documentation. Yes. Okay. Can you get a work item for PGA to convert a blog post to talk for creating a template? So who wants to write the lens template? Oh wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I thought that was the work item. I'm sorry. What was the work item? Yeah, it's to convert my blog post to proper template documentation. How to write a template? Yeah. Documentation. How to write. Oh wow. Okay. So if you get someone to sign up to write a lens template, they're going to need some help. And sure. Okay. So who wants to do that? <coughs> TLE. Mm -hmm. he thinks it's cool. <laughs> Come on. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, so it goes. <laughs> um, do you think it would make sense to make it a tutorial as well on developer of the Ubuntu compact from documentation? How to make, to make a template? And to, to how to write a new template. Especially if the tutorial shows making a lens template. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> so okay, we do both. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll help you this I week. Mean, if we do it this week, get a session. Why don't we get a session and we can all spend like a, like an hour getting started on it at UDS. Spend an hour hacking to get uh, started. In fact, I already know how to write, how to write a lens template. template. Yeah. Why? How to write a lens. So we can do it. So only the Python one. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to support the Valar one. Okay. Let's do a Python one. Somebody else can. Someone thinks it's wrong, they can write their own. And okay. We can learn All right. Um, you got out of it, TLE. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, from my perspective, porting to GTK3 and PyGI. Uh, getting the cute quick template and getting the the lens template that is like infinitely more progress than we've made in a long time and I'd, I'd be happy if we did even part of that um, can I suggest one thing small thing that I think we should do is like pull I think there's a lot of code paths in the project that we don't support well and don't use like logging like yeah. have it to like automatically turn on logging and stuff I don't think that even works so I think we should just pull it out like you want like a review of like the boilerplate, I think has a lot of not well functioning code in it that we should just delete. Um, you know what I'm talking about, TGA? Well, like supposedly you can run the program with dash V or whatever, and it'll start logging. Yeah. But I don't think it ever works. Get it to work. Users don't think it works. I mean, developers. 
There was one a question and a bug on it. We yeah, one. there's there's inconsistency between two templates. One uses dash d and one uses dash b. And there's a bug filed about that. Um, All right, but, but the, your your broader question is, there could be a review done and seeing like, is there anything that? Yeah, let me put this. We got five years to support this. Like the smaller the boilerplate is, yeah. the easier it'll be to support. And so make sure there's not. And if if we do start dropping um, dropping items, doing so at the same time we have this major epic switch between versions probably makes sense. Um, what other features do we have besides logging that are built in? The, Most things are added. Yeah. Does add dialog still work and all that? Do people still use that? It should. I believe I did it for <coughs> when I reviewed the um, the tutorial that we shipped. Do we have unit tests for it? No. We have unit tests, but I don't think we. No, we do have for add dialog. Well, how do you know it's a yeah. no unit test? Yeah. Um, we have unit tests that test that it puts the right code into place. That it doesn't actually run it, but yeah. So, um, I see. Maybe we should make it run it. So uh, one. I think I think we should do is work with the QA team. I know this is all in the universe and stuff, but work with the QA team to get this, like, just whenever there's a, they just have automated tests for you to just always ensure that it's, it's good. I'm sure the QA, QA team. So you're Jonathan, saying, do you think um, your team would help us with that? Running unit tests? Not, no, mm -hmm. proper integration, <clears throat> like having it run daily. And, the sure. write tests where we, you know, help us write tests. Was the community write tests and for harder things to test and stuff. Uh, so, you're suggesting having QA run our current suite daily and then also a separate effort to add more tests to that suite? Yeah, having smart people help us with, not that you guys aren't smart, having more smart people help us with writing tests where Okay. You know, like can I assign those to JML? Sure. Okay. Uh, things that are hard to test, we can just remove. Do you? Uh, who wants to take the task of looking for stuff we can drop from the from the, the main templates? I will. Yeah. <coughs> be uh, be harsh. Yeah, five, five freaking years. I was just thinking the other day of imagining having to deal with Hardy still as a desktop platform and having a whole year left to go on that. That scares me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, let's we'll just make this get people started and stuff away. Okay. Uh, anything else that people would like to work on or like to see? Joe has a question. Oh. Will it be possible to add features along the way, or must everything be absolutely ready for precise? I think uh, everything must be absolutely ready for precise. Ish. This is all in universe, right? We're not going to push this into main. The SRU requirements are the same, I believe. Right, yeah. but there's only 18 months of support, not five years of support, right? So, yeah. like. Oh. I don't think. I don't, really? I don't think that's true. It's not? I didn't understand it that way, but. Uh, Fair enough. It's in universe. Yeah, the SRU requirements are the same stuff, but you know, Canonical is not going to be writing paid support for it. Uh, there's, there's a different security <laughs> update. Yeah. So, like, it'll be available, but I mean, I think it's reasonable to like tell users after two years. Like, like I think what we should do is think about having <coughs> later versions of Quickly still work on Precise, like the way they're doing the kernel. You know, uh, so then we can tell perhaps users, offer. A PPA. I don't think we have a PPA right yeah, now. Yeah, install from the PPA. And I think that might be a better way. But well, I, we have a couple of years to figure that out. And and yeah. that job of uh, oh yeah, and KS Pad mentions actually you know there's the backports. Backports, yeah. Um, well, PPA is so much easier than backports. Uh, right. but well, backports will show up in the software center though. Right. So like, if you, uh, there, there's. Some advantages. The the task of backporting 
or right. having a PPA that still works on precise will be infinitely easier if, if we. There's another motivation for switching to Py PTK3 and Python 3. And I don't think there's a question that we have to do that. Right? Yeah, that's like the bare minimum that we have to do. If we do that, I'll actually be happy. Agreed. That's why I want to do it by Alpha 1, just so like we know by Alpha 1 that we have a system that'll stand the test. Yeah. I, I think I can commit to that. Um, okay, anything else? Um, do we, one thing I'd like to see actually, I just thought of is, I don't know, uh, tutorials on dev.u.c yes. uh, about quickly. I, uh, do we have any now? We've got Rick's, Rick's tutorial. Which um, I don't think it works. People tell me that it's, <laughs> okay. it well, it doesn't work. work. People, just somebody told me that it's based on 1104 and there's differences and he's yeah. trying to learn programming from scratch then you update it and he said it's still too different. So. Well, I, I tested the tutorial, it should work, I mean I tested it on both and fixed all the... Um, all the pictures and everything you yeah, updated? Yeah. Right. I mean the pictures I didn't, I didn't, I didn't update. But the, so that's confusing, right? Because right. like the code's all laid out differently and stuff so they couldn't... it's in different files. And, Right, yeah, but the information on the, I mean, they shouldn't be looking at the pictures, they should be looking at the code in the tutorial. I mean, and that's, that's yeah. correct. So we're talking about someone who's never programmed before, and he looks at the right. pictures to see the way the editor's set up, right. and he can't pattern, pattern okay. match to it, so yeah. we need to update I can look, yeah. all, everything. Yeah. Maybe just run through it again and take all new screenshots, so even the title bars are... Right, yeah. So, yeah, so we've got that tutorial in there, uh, but we haven't got any. We've got the session, another UDS session on... Um, tutorials on developer tool yeah. to come talk about. We can talk about it there. I've got a ton on my blog that could be turned into. I've written like tutorials. Yeah, you, you've that. written lots, yeah. Um, do you have time to convert those to proper tutorials? They already are proper. I, I know, but so, put them in the right place. Um, I could. I, I don't know what to do. Okay. Yeah, I could. Uh, but, uh, actually, I was just hoping people would tell me. What I mean, what tutorials I think would be useful? Just give me a list, and I'll just start chunking through them. If I don't have them all, I can do them. It's like I find it a bit relaxing actually, so I do it. Um, we can talk about it on the. I mean, that's what I want to do on, on that in the session. 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 Okay. To get a list right. of tutorials and to get people who's interested in writing them. All right. So the, the other thing. Table that then. The other thing that's quickly related that we talked about was answering people's questions <coughs> the other day. So. Um, I think like Joe and other people who are already using Quickly to write apps, I think we should be a little more active in Ubuntu app developer when people come in and ask questions. Like a lot of people come in and ask questions I don't have a hope of answering. Like somebody asked the other day something about getting Boost to build with G++ was a question yesterday in Ubuntu app developer, which is a valid question, but I don't have a hope of answering that. But a lot of people ask, um, Questions that I can't answer, or that a lot of us can answer. So, we talk what, about what's the channel name? You boot to app to that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. I, 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 I apparently dropped off my auto join list, so that's why I have not been uh, particularly involved. Um, but yeah, I'd love to see more people writing <coughs> writing tutorials and help and stuff. Like, should we talk about the help system a bit? I mean, do you think that we have the do we do anything besides the tutorial? Um, no, I mean we have, you know, like help, on the fly help for different commands, but um, the tutorial is our main, like, this is how you use it. Is the tutorial good or should we delete the tutorial? Maybe that's I too like much it. work to maintain. I, Did you maintain it? Yeah, every release I make sure that it's uh, still applicable and occasionally, if I feel it's bad enough, take new screenshots. Um, I, that hasn't been onerous for me and I can continue doing that. Um, whether if, if developer.ubuntu.com starts to have like this large body of better tutorials, maybe there's a point where we just say go look at that instead. Yeah. Um, you can do both. Yeah. Maybe, maybe add, maybe add in the current tutorial, go here for lots more. Um, I don't know, have you run through it recently? Do you, do you have opinions on the tutorial? I have not run through it recently. I wrote it like way back in the day. Like, it's the DVD player one. That doesn't sound familiar. Not DVD player, DVD library one. 
Just still, doesn't, still doesn't sound familiar. I don't actually remember what you build in it. In it. Okay. Well, um, I'll take an action item to add a link at least to developer that. Should we maybe um, delete the Pi Game template? Oh, I like it. It's so adorable. <laughs> the Pi Game template? Yeah. Have you tried making a game with it, though? I have not tried modifying it, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like got a lot of my code in there, and I've learned a lot about writing using okay. Pi Game since then, and it's functional and okay, but I'm wondering whether really it would be better just to document how to use the Ubuntu application template to add Pygame to it, if it's possible. Because that's what I do now, I don't even use it anymore. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, well, because like it's all written in, in, in Pygame, so you have no user input. Like, you can't collect strings from people. It takes longer to write the high okay. score functionality than it does to make a game. <laughs> Can I, well fine, can I add a task along the lines of, you were asking what tutorial should I write? Can you write a tutorial that, that talks about that? Yes. I, I, and then maybe we could add, like my Pi game base class to quickly, quickly widgets or something. Mm. To get that extra stuff. Because I did write some good logic, like over the raw Pi game base classes. Yeah, once you have high score and stuff like that. Then. Yeah, or we can make another, the other thing that we could do is make a Pi game template that derives from it. But the way to do it now, you could add it later. You could add Pi game oh. later. <coughs> yeah. So I just look at every file from the Ubuntu application yeah. template. Yeah, the group chat. Yeah. Just one. Yeah, so I, do, I just look at every file from the Ubuntu application template. Yeah, so basically what we can remove is the verbosity things. I'm sorry, the what? The debug, uh, the debug okay, flags, the logging and stuff. stuff, the yeah. logging stuff. Um, we have a lot of code that, you know, one, one of the things that we try to promote is that when you are building a quickly application, you have no dependency on quickly anymore. But we have a lot of codes that are run unmodified. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to think if we should put that in a base class or uh, some package. Well, we we did the work uh, last cycle or the the one before that to split it into a yeah. a separate library that was a separate exactly, folder. Exactly, but maybe we should put it somewhere put that else. In package. That's why because that's confusing. Yeah, you that's don't confusing. Really know when what to edit, when like I just when run this code, yeah, let's say what. Because it's a lot. It's confusing. Yeah. And also then we can't update it for everybody. And you have to, yeah, okay. What do you then think? you have to, to maintain an API. No we create a lib folder that's got like base class, basically got functionality in it, which the user's not supposed to modify. And it gets copied in each project. And we're debating now whether we should keep doing it that way. Because it's simple and the application that you make then has no dependencies. Or should we make a package that your project depends on that has basically quickly lib in it? So, I, would, I mean, I don't, why would you just not make a library? Why make it a dependent library? Because it's a trivial amount of code. Is it? I, I think so. Then why does it exist at all? Because it's boilerplate, and so that we can, instead of giving the user, uh, you know, like, 200 lines of code that they can modify, we give them like 10 lines of code that they can modify. Right. But the, that extra 190 lines of code, I don't think is worth throwing into a library. Why don't we put it upstream? Uh, into what? Well, uh, I don't think it's that kind of code. It's, it's just like, you know, handling function call, I mean, argument parameters and, I don't know, like opening a, a, a GTK window either. I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, upstream into what? It would be upstream into high GDK. Why not? Because we don't use we don't use PyGDK anymore. But then, then you don't need boilerplate for GDK. We do. We just sorry, I'm done on the side. Oh well, I guess we could write it in C and add it to GDK. We because it's like really presumptuous way to write an application, and like TDK is like a general purpose. It's actually like cross platform language. You know, between some group, it calls the right functions automatically. Yeah. Okay. Basically, says here's how you use GDK for a Ubuntu application. Yeah, so I would basically, I think, so I personally have like this prejudice against copying around boilerplate. So that, that's why I asked you, because yeah, I knew you did. So. Yeah, okay, so I, so, I mean, then you're going to get my prejudiced answer, which is 
But if it's a library, make it a library. If it's a small library, well, that just like what's yes. the, what really is the overhead in, in, in the impediment. And if it's if you don't think it's like ideally there should be an Ubuntu SDK that's got that doesn't need boilerplate for people to write. That's what we should be pushing for. Well, yeah. I guess okay. maybe I mean, this is the boilerplate that every app needs. It's just like you know, like the, the tiny little shit, like open open a window. But, like, Except the button click. I, I don't know. It's, it's nothing. Too and and I and I I am sympathetic to libraries, but in this situation, the difference is between um, quickly as how you run your app versus quickly how you make your app. And I feel like we've historically erred on the side of quickly as how you make your app, and after that, it's your app. You mean there's value in being able to have the code and modify it? Like, yes, and not having quickly introduced any dependencies. It's, it's all of a sudden your app isn't a quickly app, it's just your app. You know? Yeah, that's true. Right. But we are trying to push for quickly widgets, <coughs> so it had a dependency in some way. No, we keep that very separate. The quickly, there is no, you don't have to use quickly widgets. Like you can write a cross platform Python app, but can, can you with the, no, you probably can't. Mm -hmm. Quickly widgets? I think. I don't know. You know what? Whatever. Who's doing the work? Whoever's doing the work in this side episode. You guys can buy all that. Unless you want to do the work. Do you want to? No, I don't want to do the work. Well, so right now, the, the path of least resistance is just leaving it as it is. I think we modify the edit command so it doesn't open all those files. I don't think it does right now. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's already done. Uh, okay. Let me ask you this, where are you supposed to add code to make dbus if we want to be a dbus consumer? Uh, wherever you like. Um, That's not new. So maybe we should add that to the library. Oh, but we can't because we'd have to go back and update everything. Well, we do. Every time they run quickly, we update. We, the upgrade command is run and we can, we can update that code. So literally the next time they touch quickly, we'll update it. Um, we can't update it on the fly. Yeah. Actually, could someone get an action item to look at how to add dbus support to it? Like, what do you mean by like, a deep, run, be a dbus server? Or DBus 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 whenever I try to like bind to a dbus event, like the first thing it says is, you don't have the right main loop. What do you think you're doing, jerk, trying to use dbus? Like, get the hell out of here. And then I have to go figure out like, uh, where do we run the by DK main loop and like make sure that I add it, add the, there's that witch chant that you have to call to say, this is a main loop. What's that? Yeah, you have to tell this is a main loop. Uh -huh. I have some boilerplate for that. What's that? I have some boilerplate for that. You have some boilerplate for that. So we should add that at least to the... Do you, you, know, do you know what I'm talking about, Mike? Uh, does, I'm not, I've never dealt with the, the main loop thing, and I suspect such issues might go away in PyGI versus PyGDK. Uh, it's still in PyGY. Mm -hmm. Like, in Software Center, so it's exactly the same kind of code. I, I find it offensive. Like, and we tell, and sometimes it's like not even you're not even you're consuming another library that uses Dbus, mm -hmm. and so you don't even know that you're using Dbus. So, for instance, I wrote, I tried to use when I, the last time I ran into it, I was using I was writing Stealthy, and I was using Zeitgeist library, which properly insulates you from Dbus, but since it's ultimately making Dbus calls oh. in your app. Mm -hmm. It won't run because. Might you be talking about the difference between GDBus and DBus GLib? No? It was using DBus GLib, but. You can't. You have to create your own DBus main loop, which is separate from your GDK main loop. You have to call it in the right order. So I gave you an action item to write a tutorial on how to add DBus to port. I don't think we should do that. I think we should add to the template and just make it go away. Because you don't know that you're using DBus. Can we just add it to the template? Well, I, I guess I, I guess the question is, what do you mean by debus support? Add the debus main loop. Okay. Call if if that needs any. Okay. But even if the application okay. doesn't use debus at all. Why not? I'm still confused. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's not to do it. He'll investigate whether you can do it. Okay, fine. It's the most infuriating thing. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, the warning is not really welcoming. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, and the task is just like offensive that you have to do it. It's like not doesn't. Yeah. So it's, anything that means that all quick application will depends on Dbus. Dbus Jupe? No, don't do that. Whoa, yeah, one alpha GTK two. You have to. Well, we're not adding features to GTK two apps. So how would a GTK three app, GTK three app use? Well, GDBus is not ready yet for PYGY. I hope it will be this cycle. How can it not be? I mean, GI oh, is it? It's not as PT. OK, interesting. Is, is, really is that a problem with the rest of GI or just that one chunk of it? Uh, it's, it's part of GI. It's an issue with how it interacts with GI. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Um, OK. And they are trying to fight that for a long time already. Um, they didn't get around it. OK. Maybe we just need someone to get figure out what the Dbus story is and how we're going to handle it. So right now in Software Center, we are still using <coughs> Dbus GD. Wow. Even if we are in P1 GY. And we're going to support that for five years? Or we, is that the plan for 1204? Keep doing it that way. Yeah. yeah. Sucks. It sucks. Well, so, uh, is that, I mean, is anybody in the universe working on making PyGI and GGBus work together? Like, Thomas, that seems like the best Thomas is working you know, to... Uh, and Pity. To... To Mew, yeah, and, and Pity as well. Okay. So the, basically the PYGY guy. Is that going to happen in the cycle? I mean, can we just assume that The that thing is that we don't know. It okay. was supposed to happen last cycle, but... Still didn't work completely, so... That is offensive to me. As oh, offensive as adding me in the biz to you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a session later today, I think we should be discussing it. Okay. Yeah, but um, whether only by three is in 404 or by three in just in Dun dun. Alright. Um, I guess we're done. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Coming back to the, the code set and the view code you said before. So is it correct that you recommend to not edit this and it will be copied to each template application? And afterwards, the map might be updated? Yeah, okay. in, in safe ways. Yeah. Like just okay. to fix like minor bugs or whatever, or typos or something. So we have the same in created templates, to create templates, and what you get is at the end you get a dialog where you said, okay, this file will be updated, but as the um, developer can see the file is also, you should be able to add something or modify it a bit. So. Like what I experienced in my project, uh, you see that this never works out very well. Really? Because you've modified the board. Yeah, because the developers just look into the code because it's in the project and it seems it's from. You know, so, uh, okay, it's okay. One, it's so, 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 situation A is you tell the user don't modify this and then they go modify it and you have problems updating it. Situation yeah. B is you have a library that they can't modify. Yeah. Which, which of those is better for the person? I mean, they made the choice to modify it, right? Yeah, um, but for writing, like, start from the beginning, right, get fast applications that we're running, the developers usually either just, uh, they saw the message, don't modify it, in like a few months, they just modify it at some point, because they say, okay, I need this feature. And, but at this stage, if you um, provide them a library, they say, okay, now I know how it works, so I can write this part of the library myself. You mean they would copy the library code at that point? Yeah, and, yeah. But, but then they, uh, they are out of the house and they Or alternatively, the you would make the library so they can derive from the library yeah. and modify yeah. it yeah. in a subclass, would be... So you're saying that Q Creator regrets that decision? So you're saying that Q Creator regrets that decision? Um, at least I do. <laughs> yeah. uh, how do you feel that Q Creator users would feel about Q Creator adding a dependency for them? I think they, they wouldn't care because they it, 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 you have anywhere a lot of dependencies. So it's just another one. It has some convenience classes with that one. And if the developer needs to modify parts of that, like misses features, you can either request that or just do it on your own as if you, you wouldn't use the template before him. In general, the reason I use Ubuntu is so I don't have to care about how many dependencies I have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sure. Three five. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, this is. Yes. Uh, 
Patches, welcome. <laughs> uh, I, got enough, I got enough on my plate this, this cycle yeah. <laughs> for something I don't even care about. So. Um, that was the point I was making about you know, I'm just going to do the work and make it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we have some action items. Sounds like the big thing for the, the um, two big things for quickly is like make the transition and trim the fat. And lots of the tutorials that we can get. Yeah, tutorials. Everyone should write them. We should find like quickly apps and just like maybe just talk about the way other people did things. And it's all open source, right? So. Yeah, do we have a good survey of? Existing Quickly apps. You know, would be easier is if every Quickly app had a dependency on the library that we could track. This library should ping the server so that we can try it. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I don't know. I hear from people from time to time. I think it's reasonably common for people to use, people to use it. I see references too. It's hard to have like a news alert for the word quickly. So, like, should, we <laughs> yeah. should we rename it? Uh, now's the time. We uh, should even name it if we really... Spileta? <laughs> we could call it Spileta. It's Spileta create. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should talk to design about branding. <laughs> Maybe they have strong opinions. I mean, they might. I don't know. Quickly, so cute though. Yeah. Yeah. And once you start using cute, I mean, if you change the whole frame of cute, and it becomes even more appropriate. <laughs> uh, uh, gonna do we icon. could call it just cute, C U T E. Oh, but that would also be hard to Google for. <laughs> we should just use a random word generator, just random combinations of words. People decided to call their programming language Go. I mean, yeah. Yeah, but we're not Google. <laughs> we don't have quite the. the cool. Okay. Okay. So, keep the name quickly, and just make sure that the next version of Ubuntu isn't called quickly something. That would really confuse things. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe, thanks for all your... It's really awesome having you in the Quickly community, Joe. You're, yeah. you're the man. Anyone else up there that we recognize from the... Thank you. How are you feeling, DJ? Great, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's still a little bit better than yesterday, so... Okay. It's...